I mark mm -hmm. bloopers. Gets in. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Fusion Children's Ministry Podcast. My name is Brent Colby. And I'm Steven Zaman, just like the fish. Today, we are talking about how you need to know your role. Not someone else's role, Steven. No, know your, your role. role. Today's episode, as always, is not sponsored by Dancing Santa. Take a look I, at this. I don't know if I approve of this not sponsored by... Oh, but we can just how many views it. do you think this Dancing Santa is not quite hit a million views yet? It's still a viral video. I don't know. Steven, this is... You've had some great not sponsored buys, and I don't think this is one of them. Do you have one of these in your house, by the way? Sure do. Grew up with it for probably 18 years. Is it motion censored, or do you yep. have to push a button? And it's just as scary as you might think it is. Oh, so like in the middle of the night, when you're going to the bathroom. Yeah, and you, you just walk by, and all of a sudden, Santa starts singing and dancing, <laughs> shaking his butt. It's Ugh. weird. That's not great. Yep. That's not great. All right. Um, I have something awesome I'd like to show you. OK. This is a self-described honey dispensary. Okay. Now, I never know what these are, so. <laughs> in my house, we eat lots of honey. We like honey. We eat it on it's like probably too many things. It's like Winnie the Pooh. Like Winnie the Pooh. Okay. Here I want to show you, uh, somebody set up an automated beehive system where the honey just somehow kind of flows out. I'll show it to you here. Okay. Check it out. Um, it's a gift, so it's going to loop. So you'll see here toward the end. But here's the beginning. You set up your whatever, and the honey is just coming out of the hive. Isn't that amazing? Look at the look at the jar, look how much honey they're getting out of this beehive. It's like a dream come true, Stephen. Look at that. Yeah, I guess if you're really into honey, that's, <laughs> that's a really cool I, thing. I, I get mine from Costco, but you know, <laughs> you could do that too. All right, whatever. That is, it's, so that's awesome. Come that's on. awesome. That's cool, right? I think what's more awesome is the people who are in there. A whole bunch of hipsters. They would have the time to build some sort of automated beehive honey system thing. That's than, right. Just like everybody else. Just going to Costco. Go to Costco. All right. Know your role. Brent, this is important. Yeah, it is Knowing important. your role. Um, you be you. Don't be somebody else. When you grow up in the church, you see pastors, you see ministers, you kind of have an idea of you what do they see do, them, yeah. who they are, what their job is. And then whether you're volunteering as that guy Which ones or to gal, avoid, which ones to get candy right, from. Exactly. Yeah. When you start serving in that role, Sometimes it looks a little different from the inside than it does from the outside. Totally. Yeah. Can you can you remember, because how long have you been in ministry now? I have been, let's see, 2011, okay. five years. So do you, can you recall one of the things, but you also grew up in ministry, so you probably had a good sense of it. Yeah. But even from then, was there something that you saw from that different perspective that really kind of caught you off guard or surprised you a little bit? Uh, well... I never, I never believed the myth that pastors only work on Sunday. So okay, that was, right. that was nice. You know, sometimes you get into ministry and you're like, "Wow, this is way more than you could possibly ever think of." There's so many things. There's so many hats that you kind of have to wear. But I think um, the biggest thing was kind of what, what, it, what it means to be a pastor. Like mm -hmm. that, the people are what's most important. Um, we do a lot of work with uh, writing our talks and different and different things, and we can get um, I don't know really inundated in some different just doing some different things. But I think the biggest challenge or the biggest like curveball was not to do some of those things because at the end of the day it might take away from people, which are the most important. Yeah. How do you keep because churches we do a lot of stuff, right? Yeah. It's, do a lot of stuff. I was always struck with, I realized, every day, you know, I serve alongside and with pastors, I realized yeah. they are the, they're the theologians, they're the counselors, yeah. they're the business, man, the property managers, yeah. they're the investors, they're the team leaders, they're the discipline. Like, yeah. a pastor wears so many different hats. Yeah. Um, I think that's why there isn't, like, just some sort of book. Like, you can learn how to do a skill in a lot of other jobs. Right. There's no book that says how to be a successful, like, pastor like here's all the different skills you're going to need to know how to master right it's there's just there's like yeah. 11 books you got to well, do in fact <laughs> most of these books behind us deal something to do Hogwarts. with either theology or leadership or some sort of like yeah. analysis of like leading so ministries much. and churches it's huge huge um there's a book by a guy named john piper 
and okay. uh, it's titled Brothers We Are Not Professionals. Mm. And the whole idea of embracing your calling as like a God ordained thing and not just some sort of pro professional vocation. Right. I think today yeah. we want church to be so slick, right? Yeah. Like yeah, yeah, we yeah. got multiple services. We got multiple services maybe and we stack things up and nice. we got to end. Yeah, it was quick recovery. Good. Yeah. And so we have to be so like on top of everything, right? right? And so our churches kind of turn into machines and they lend themselves to being systematized and programmed and all scripted out and all that thing, yeah. all that is great. But if it takes away from like the human aspect and the, the gospel side of what we're doing, it can kind of yeah. derail the whole thing. And and you as a, as at the end of the day, it's all about Jesus and your relationship with Jesus too. It's really like when, if you're getting to a point where ministry is getting really hard, ministry gets really, really hard or really just bad when you start doing the work of the ministry without a relationship with Jesus. Yeah. You know, that's when you all of a sudden you start like constantly grinding those gears and you're doing that stuff. And because things can be hard, but you know, at the end of the day, okay, God's got this. I'm doing it for him. I might be annoyed. I might be frustrated, but yeah. at least, at least I've got that. That's good. Yeah. What's like the number one thing? Because children's ministry, even more than most ministries, is very detail oriented. It's exhausting. I mean, yeah. every weekend to do what? That's not something of us just trying to like say that we have a harder job than the other <laughs> pastors in the church, but we have a harder job than the other pastors in the church. And you guys know, right? Yeah. So how, how, what do you do to keep that, keep that, just keep Jesus in focus in the midst of all the business that you have on a weekly basis? Again, it's going back to just knowing your role, that you are a pastor and people are gonna be coming to you at, for spiritual advice. And so you've gotta have a really good relationship with Jesus because if, you know, it goes back to the practice what you preach. You can say yeah. a lot of good things, but at some point your actions and your attitude and how you are as a person is gonna come through and people, that's what's gonna, that's what's gonna turn people either on or off of Jesus more than anything else. Yeah, that's good. Do you have any thoughts about how to keep that professionalism versus pastoral, you know, they're not, they don't oppose each other, but if you get no. the one over the other, you can kind of miss no. some key things in your ministry. Yeah, but know and, your role. Yeah. Any thoughts about how you keep those in balance? We'd love to see a comment Let below. Let us know. Yeah, totally. Um, Stephen, before we go, I have a question for you. Okay. Are you smarter these. than the kids in your children's ministry? No. Okay. No. Well, just to confirm your suspicions, uh, I'm going to have a little quiz for you. Now, these quizzes, this quiz, I suppose. This Common Core math stuff, I don't, I don't understand it. So if it has anything to do with that. This is targeted it. at elementary age kids. So I'm okay. going to ask you three questions. Right. We'll see how you do out of three. Okay. Question number one is this. What white fluffy clouds are known as fair weather clouds? Oh. Are they cumulus, cumulonimbus, or stratus? Those aren't even any of the three clouds that I even know of. <laughs> what were your three clouds did you I know? I thought it was like Cirro Stratus and something. What was it? A cumulus. 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 The correct answer is... Oh, cumulus. The correct answer is... Cumulus. Correct. You got one right. Right here. Just yes. soak it in. Okay. Question number two. Take that. Between 1455... Do you have oh that pictured in your head? Yeah. 1455 and 14. 85, the War of the Roses took place oh. in what country? You know oh. this. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I'm not even yeah, giving yeah, you multiple yeah. questions. Yeah. England. England. England is your answer, and it is correct. Yeah. Steven, you, are, you may be as smart as an elementary age Maybe, kid. maybe. We'll maybe. see, our last question that one here. That easy, that one was easy. The common type of radio wave is referred to as VHF. What do the letters VHF not to be confused with UHF, stand for. VHF? I don't Very know. Very high frequency. Okay. Variable high frequency or video homing frequency. No, it can't be video. It's This is radio we're talking about, right? Well, it's the most common type of radio wave. TV is broadcast through radio very waves. Very high. I don't want to blow your very mind. High very frequency. high frequency. Very high is your answer. And you are on question number three. Correct! Oh, you aced it! Yeah! Nice. Stephen, congratulations. You are at least as smart as the kids in your ministry. Hopefully my test tomorrow goes as well as this one does. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, thanks for uh, listening in. Uh, we appreciate you hanging out with us. Yeah! And we look forward to seeing you again soon. See you next time.